Hey guys, um, welcome to your Monday math lesson. Um, before we start, I wanted to talk about one thing, um, and it's what to do when you are confused about the math, either because you've realized you're confused or because maybe I made a comment saying, hey, I think you may be a little confused here. Um, being confused isn't a bad thing, um, but it is a tipping point. Um, it can either push you into like really understanding something way better or it can make you feel really defeated and uh like frustrated um and especially when you are by yourself in your home and you're not in the classroom that turning point becomes even more uh scary um for a lot of people um and during this distance learning we're putting a lot of uh responsibility on you uh, one to like guide and do your own work and make sure you're doing the work and but two to when you hit those moments of confusion to reach out um, and to not feel defeated by them but to know there are resources and places you can go to get help um, and so because of this um, I've shifted around my zoom uh, system a little bit first of all I'm switching um, from instead of you signing up for Zoom, uh, I am going to be on Zoom from noon to 1.30 just for questions. Make sure you, you can just pop in, click that link, um, and you have to have verified your Zoom account. So if you haven't done that, if you haven't done, gone to sfusd.zoom.com and signed in from there, um, you won't be able to log into the Zoom. So make sure you do that first. Um, but then once you've done that, click on the link at any time between noon and 1.30 and come in and ask me questions. Um, and Or even just like show me what you're confused on. I won't require you to be on video and I won't require you to talk, though it would be helpful if you talk a little bit. But we can also use the chat function and it can be very useful. Um, and then the second thing I'm going to start offering um, is a challenge Zoom session. Um, and so that's like if you do all the math and you're like, man, I'm great on this math. I haven't felt confused at all. Um, log into that challenge Zoom session. Um, so from 2 to 2.30, I'm going to be running a Zoom class. Um, and so if you feel really confident and you want your math thinking to be pushed even a step further, log in there, make, grab a friend, log in with your friend, and I'd love to see you at that challenge session. At the end of this week, um, we are actually going to be taking the same benchmark again. Um, and this is because I don't think a single person got a perfect score on that map, on that benchmark. Um, and so I'm really excited to actually see us face some of that confusion, reach out, get those questions answered either by me, by a friend, or by another adult in your life. Um, work through those confusions to a point where you feel successful and then when we do that benchmark again, I'm really excited to see everyone kind of bring their grades up a little bit. Um, okay, so um, on to today's math. Um, and so actually today's math, I'm not going to require you to take notes because there's going to be a lot of stuff on the page. And we are actually going to be working on a single sentence frame. Um, and that sentence frame looks like this. Oop. You notice the page is so much bigger this time. I got a lot of Oh, frick, I think you probably can't hear me. Oh, hopefully you can hear me. Um, I'm going to finish this video, um, and hopefully you'll be able to hear it so I don't have to redo it with my uh, headphones. Um, okay, so um, this is the sentence frame. The sentence frame is blank and blank are equivalent because, and I forgot my dot, dot, dot. And when you answer, and you, when you finish this because, I want you to make sure you're using some of these action words. Plug in, simplify, compare, draw, or count. Okay? So, plug in is when we put numbers in for variables. Simplify is when we take something that's very long and we make it shorter using usually PEMDAS or an order of operations. Um, so we go from a very long expression to a smaller expression. Um, sometimes resulting in a single number, but often resulting in maybe something with some variables in it still. Um, compare, when we take two different things and we look at what's similar and different about them. Draw, this is like when we're tracing out algebra tiles, and count, often when you have those algebra tiles and you're counting how many things you have. Okay, 
Um, and so the first thing I'm going to reveal are these three expressions. We have our purple expression, we have our green expression, and we have our red expression. And I took some time here to make our variables in black. And so remember, this is not a multiplication symbol. This is a variable. I'm actually almost never going to use x as a multiplication symbol anymore. This is a little complicated because this actually is a multiplication problem. This is 2 times whatever x is. So if x is 5, this is 2 times 5. If x is 10, this is 2 times 10. Here, it's addition, so this would be 2 plus 5, or 2 plus 10. This x is a variable. Um, x is going to be probably the most common variable you start to see. Okay, so looking at these equations, two out of the three of these expressions are equivalent. The third one is not equivalent. Our job is to figure out which two are equivalent and be able to explain them using some of our math action words up here. So the first thing I'm going to do, mainly because this is what we focused on last week, is to draw them out. Um, and so here is my drawings. Um, here I have my purple equation, which is I have my four one blocks, and then I have two x blocks, because it's x times two. Remember, these blocks, if x was five, these blocks would be five blocks long. If x is 100, these blocks would be 100 blocks long. If x was one, these blocks would just be a single blo one block. Um, but we don't know what x is. x could actually be a lot of different things. Um, and here we have two plus x. We have a single x plus four. And here we have three x plus four, and then we subtracted an x, which is why I crossed one of them out. Okay, so using this sentence frame, I can write, I'm going to make the assertion that this one and this one are purple and our red slash orange one are equivalent. So 4 plus 2x is, oh, and... three x plus four minus x are equivalent because and I'm gonna look at my action words here and because I'm looking at a drawing, I'm probably going to click to this draw action word and maybe to this count action word. Um, equivalent because when you draw out the blocks, they both have Two, one, two, one, two, two x blocks, and one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, four, one block. Okay, so this is how I would use this sentence frame when I am drawing, but I'm not always going to be drawing. There's actually another way to prove equivalencies. So I'm going to reveal the rest of this paper. So here again, I have my three expressions. I have 4 plus 2x, and I have 2 plus x plus 4, and then I have 3x plus 4 minus 1. Um, and here... I've drawn them out three different, each of them three different times because I'm going to plug in a different variable number for each each time, and I'm going to do them for each one. So for all of these three, I'm going to plug in zero. I left this blank for where my x would go, and I'm going to put that in as black so we make sure we remember which number we put in as a variable. So this is four plus two times x, and here our x is zero, so we know that. 2 times 0, we have to do, we got to remember PEMDAS, because so parentheses, exponents, multiplication, so we got to do our multiplication first. So we know that this is going to be 0. So 4 plus 0 is 4. OK. 
okay? And here again, I left the blank where my X was going to be. This is why we use a variable, because leaving it blank looks kind of weird and like it's hard to do it. But right now I am because I'm actually going to put that number. Our X now is 0. So this is 2 plus 0 plus 4, so, which is 6. And then our last one, which is 3 times X, so this is 3 times 0. Again, I put that little multiplication symbol in now that we're putting a number in, so this doesn't look like 30, it looks like 3 times 0, plus 4, minus X, and it's the same X. Okay, so 3 times 0, this we do first, right? So 3 times 0 is 0, so plus 4 is 4 minus 0, so this is 4. I'm going to look across here. I'm going to notice that this one gave me the same number as this one did, but this one gave me a different number. I'm just going to notice that for right now. Let's see what happens as we keep going on. So, x equals 1. We're going to see what happens when we put plug 1 in for x. And so 4 plus 2 times x, which is now 1, so times 1. So first, so in PEMDAS, we do, we make sure we do this first, so that turns into 2. So it's 4 plus 2, which is 6. Okay, and now we're looking at this one. We have our blank spot and we're plugging the same number in for x. So 2 plus 1, which is 3 plus 4. Um, 3 plus 4 is 7. You need to use a calculator for this. I'm okay with that as long as you're doing it with order of operations. If you need to pull out an order of operation sheet too. But again, I'm actually not asking you to write this down. So just trust some because there's just so many numbers. Um, okay, I just want you to make sure you see where I'm getting my numbers from. Okay, and lastly, um, 3 times... We left our blank because this is 3 times x, but our x is 1, so 3 times 1 plus 4 minus 1. So 3 plus 4, which is 7 minus 1, which is 6. And here I look across again, and I see that our purple equation and our red equation, or I guess it looks a little orange here, both gave me the same answer. But the middle equation didn't give me the same answer. So I'm starting to get make this guess. I'm like making this guess that equ this equation and this equation are equivalent. Because equivalent means they're going to give me the same thing. They're, they are they end up doing the same thing to the numbers even though they look different. But I'm not totally certain yet, so I'm going to try one more time. Okay? So 4 plus 2 times... 2, so 2 times 2 is 4, plus 4, which is 8, 2, and then I left my blank here for my x, and x here is 2, plus 4, which gives me 8, 3 times, I left a blank, plus 4, so this is 3 times 2, plus 4, minus 2, so this is 3, plus 2, so 6, plus 4, which gives me 10, minus 2, which gives me 8. And oh my god, something super weird happened. We actually got the same number each time. So let's look at this pattern really fast. So if we look across, I'm going to, I'm using a highlighter. I'm going to highlight. I'm going to look across. I'm going to highlight the ones that are the same. Across, not down, because I'm looking for the same number in. If I put the same number in, do I get the same number out? This one I got the same number. This one I got the same number. And actually, for all three of these, I got the same number. Just because... We one time got the same number on this one does not make it equivalent. You could say that 4x equals 2, this one might result in the same number, which is cool to see, but it doesn't make it equivalent. For it to be equivalent, it has to have the same number every single time, which these two on the side did. So, again, I'm using the same sentence frame. So, 4 plus 2x and I'll use my red one just to make sure. 3x plus 4 minus x. And I like writing with my purple pen the best, if you haven't noticed. R equivalent.
because I'm going to pull up here to my action words again. The action words right now, I definitely want to use plugin because that's really what I was doing. And I might want to pick one of these other two, compare or simplify, because we can either call this an output or we can say we simplified it down to an answer. Because when I plugged in, the same number for x and compared the output they the output they were the same. Okay, or I could say when I plugged in the same number for x and simplified, I got the same answer. Either one would have been good. Okay, so if you look up here, I'm using the sentence frame and I'm using at least one action word. I'm gonna highlight my action word here. Here I use draw. And here I use plug in and compare, okay? For your um, math today, you are going to be given fully formed ones of these. I'm basically giving you pieces of evidence like we do in science. So ones of these and ones of these. And you are going to have to, so either drawings or this, and you're going to use the thing I give you to write me a sentence to show me that you can pick the two out of the three that are equivalent. That is your job each time, okay? Make sure you're using this sentence frame and make sure you are using at least one of the action words, okay? Um, today, that is your homework for today. Um, and if you have any questions, make sure you're checking in to Zoom at noon to 1.30, and if you feel like you are totally good with this math and you're ready for an extra challenge, log into Zoom at two o'clock, text your friends, get them to come with you, um, and I will be there ready with a math lesson to give you at two o'clock to stretch your brain a little bit further. Okay, hopefully you guys are having a good day. Uh, stay happy and healthy. Bye.